What you're looking at is 3D printer filament, but in wood tone. Stick around to see what I've got in store for today. The nice folks at GearBest got in touch with me some time ago and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing one of their 3D printers. And I said, no thank you, it's really not a woodworking thing. But then I thought about it and I thought, well, how do I know that it's not a woodworking thing? Maybe it is. If I never try these things, I'm never going to know. And so I changed my mind and we decided that I'd go ahead and uh, that's what we're going to do is have a look at this 3D printer. Now, I'm not going to set the printer up here in the workshop. I'm going to put it in a different location. And I'm going to get my technical guy, Paul, uh, to do some work with it because he's more familiar with these things and he can teach me a little bit about it. But that's how we're going to work this. Uh, I'll be using Paul's help with this. Hey everyone, I'm Paul. I've been working behind the channel with Colin here for a number of years. And we finally decided it was time for me to help him on the front end of this channel, but to also, uh, for me to do my own channel so I'll be doing a full review of this printer along with a setup on my channel which is going to be linked below it's called Made Tech but for this channel we're going to look at how we're going to use this printer in your workshop now when Colin called me and he was like hey GearBest wants to review a 3D printer is there anything I can do with it I'm all yes there's lots of things you can do for 3D printers in your shop I had a look around on the GearBest site and I saw that they had this Creality CR10 now this thing has been getting a lot of buzz online uh, simply because it seems to be one of the best budget 3D printers out there. It has a lot of great features for its class, but two things that it's actually really well known for is it has a heated plate. Uh, the heated plate lets you print different types of plastics rather than just the PLA plastic that you get that most printers just print. And it also has a large printing area. You can see it does a 300 by 300 millimeters in the X and Y and 400 height. So that gives you fairly large prints. All right, let's go and have a look at the exciting things you can make for your shop with a 3D printer. So once we get the 3D printer set up, of course, one of the first thing we want to do is go find some models to print. And one of the great spots to do that is Thingiverse, which has thousands and thousands of free 3D models for you to print for free. You can see right off the bat, we got some clamps and some Halloween decorations and some hinges, all sorts of good stuff. So we're going to go and download a mini hacksaw handle model here because it's one of the models we want to print to show how useful this 3D printer is in the shop. So here's the one we want. It's a great little mini hacksaw getting to those little areas that I'm not going to be able to get into with a normal hacksaw. So you can have a look at it. You can spin it around, have a look. And once you've decided it's the model you want, you can just go over here and download it. Now I won't go into much detail about slicer programs on this channel except to say that you do need one in order to bring the model from your repository or wherever you got it from into your 3D printer. So this one's called Cura and you simply set up your settings. You would then export it out to your SD card and once it's saved to your SD card you're good to bring it over to your printer and start printing. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is filament. Filament is the plastic that basically feeds into your 3D printer that it prints with. Yeah, think of it kind of like a glue gun stick for a glue gun. It comes in tons of different colors. Here we got red and black and you know white that actually came with it. And we have that wood tone here that uh, Colin was talking about. Now I'll review the full setup to get the printer going for your first 3D print on my channel. But... I'll let you know that there is one magical ingredient that you do need to know about and that is glue stick and this helps the printer here to the actual bed of the printer. To start printing, insert your SD card. So after the printer warms up, it's going to go off and do its thing here so it's going to slide over and it's going to start its print. And this print is a cylinder square center finder. And it's going to be the first of a bunch of prints we do here of kind of useful things that you can use in your shop. Now as we move along here, we can see how it's building the inside structure of the plastic pieces. These things are usually not printed solid unless you tell them to. Obviously it saves time. So what it does is it puts in this honeycomb motion, which helps uh, make the inside of these plastic pieces solid. Now we're off to print the outside walls here. Them too are also slightly hollow to save on print time and on plastic. 
So after about an hour here, our printer's finishing up, and here we got our cylinder center finder. So the next item we're going to print here is a hacksaw handle. This is something I've actually uh, needed in my life here because I find a normal hacksaw is kind of sometimes hard to get into those out of the way places that you need to get into. So this holds a blade right down the center of it and should be perfect for my needs. So here you can see once again it's printing the center part which is all those hexes in there. That honeycomb type of pattern. And here we are now finished the hacksaw handle. Okay, this one's probably going to be a little hard to tell uh, from the start here, but it's actually a bit holder from my favorite drill, which is my Milwaukee M18. It actually screws right into the part where the belt clip normally goes in the drill. Something I felt the drill was missing was somewhere to keep your, to keep your most frequently used drill bits, so I actually found this on Thingverse, so I thought I'd, hey, print it. Now, if you're wondering how you get these things off the plate, you simply use a sharpened scraper and you wait for your plate to cool down and then you simply kind of try to jam it up under there and eventually it just pops right off like that. Okay, so this one's an interesting one. It is a uh, drill bit sharpener that actually fits on your Dremo and lets you use the uh, abrasive wheels on your Dremo or other rotary tools to sharpen drill bits. So this should come in handy as I have a ton of dull drill drip or drill bits and like most people I tend to go out and buy new ones as opposed to just sharpening the ones I have. So this should give you kind of a better look here on how this thing kind of prints. It's laying down layer by layer on the top here. The last tool we're going to be printing here is another cylinder center finder. This is a completely different style from the first one I printed at the beginning and it's also much larger. I needed something that you know to basically find the center of some large coasters I wanted to make so this seemed to work perfect so I thought I'd give it a try. So here you can see the interior inlays. This one gives you a really good example on how this kind of inside honeycomb pattern works. So here we have all our tools laid out. Here's our large cylinder center finder. Now there's some uh, on the back here. I still got some goo from the glue left over, so I'm going to have to clean that all off. This is the drill bit sharpener. There's two sizes here, a small and a big one. And you can see on the small one, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a bit of supports in there that that needs to be cut away. They simply just put it in there. Printer puts it in there to help support so that overhang doesn't fall over during printing. Uh, this is the drill bit holder for the Milwaukee M18. And you can see I cut the bottom out there to insert the screw. Uh, here's the other center finder, the small one. And here's the hacksaw handle. Now you can see in the hacksaw handle uh, there are supports that are also being placed where the hacksaw itself goes. I did cut it out of the back right here, but the other two need to be cut out. And they simply just clip out with a pair of clippers and you can pull them out with some pliers. They're pretty easy to remove. Okay, let's have a look at these things to see if they actually work. So first is the small square cylinder center finder. And I'm going to use it to find the center on some coasters here, or on a coaster. So simply throw it in there. Take a pencil, mark one side, mark the other, and there's your center. So it seems to work just fine. Okay, second here we have the other center finder. This is the larger one of a different design. And once again, we're going to test it on a coaster. It's a much larger coaster. So we just take these two knobs here, and we just butt it up against your round cylinder here, and... Once again, draw a line, and draw another line, and here you go, you got center. So they seem to both work perfectly. Let's have a look at these drill bit sharpeners. So here's two sizes here for different size drill bits. Now to put those on, or to use them on your rotary tool, you simply unscrew this little collar thing here. You screw one of them on, and here you're going to insert an abrasive wheel. And then you take your drill bit and you simply just put it up like this, 
and kind of turn it and you got a sharpened drill bit. Here's the drill bit holder for the M8 Milwaukee M18. And like I said, I had to cut out this little hole here to insert the screw to mount it to the drill. But other than that, it printed perfectly. So let's see if this works. So uh, i just simply slide some bits in here and it seems to be working just fine. This is probably going to be the most handy tool or handy uh, accessory I printed. I've been looking for one of these for a while. So last here is the hacksaw handle, and I've placed a hacksaw blade in here, of course, and I've mounted it with these little thumb screws, so it's easy to change on and off when I need to. Now, as you can see, this thing actually seems to work quite well. It's good for those little places you need to get into. Okay, let's have a look at the filament that Colin was most interested in. That's this wood filament. This is a PA, PLA plastic with some wood fiber in it. And here we're going to use it to print some wood spinning tops. Now these spinning tops are interested because they print in three pieces. So there's a top, bottom, and then a screw that holds them together. Next item we're going to print here is a wood bowl. Now here you can see this hex pattern. That's actually not part of the bowl. That actually helps support some of the filament on the side so the, bowl, so the bowl will print properly. And here you can see in this one just how the supports are put in place at the bottom there. And this actually gives you a really good view on just how this wood filament is uh, extruded out of the 3D printer. Now the next item we're printing here are some chisel handles and you can kind of see how the inside is hollow. This gives you a really good example of how the inside is pr uh, printed hollow with cross patterns to support it. And here you can see that because I didn't level the board properly, uh, one of the items fell over. So this does happen, but the good thing is, is the other item printed just fine as you can see. All these little stringies here are just going to have to be cut off after the fact. So here's the two compared side by side, the failed one and the good one. Okay, let's have a look at all these wood filament projects we printed. Here's the failed file handle. You know, you can see the, uh, it's a good view of the support systems inside. And here's the actual completed one with all the stringies that are left off. Now those are very easily removed with a pair of clips. Just like so. Next up we have two bowls. Here's a small one I printed. And here's a larger one where the bottom supports, I haven't removed them yet. Now, just like the file handle, these are just simply clipped off too. You simply get into there with some snips and snip away. As you can see under this one, I've already removed that whole under system, that whole under support system. So the next item is the top, the spinning top. It's probably my favorite of the wood items. It spins really well, actually. This guy printed in three sections. So it's the top, and then a little screw that fits inside, and then the bottom piece, and they're simply mounted all together like that, and they fit perfectly together. Now, just like real wood, this PLA wood can be sanded, so I'm going to go and I'm going to prep these for finishing by using an 80 grit or starting with an 80 grit then down to a 220 and then finishing it off with a 600. Here I got the items finished from sanding. So here's the big bowl. Now on the big bowl I only sanded the outside and I left the inside original, you know, because I kind of like that look that it has on the inside. Here's the file handle. And here's the spinning top. Now you can see here on the spinning top, I actually broke it while I was sanding. But I used a little bit of CA and it seems to have uh, reattached just fine. Now this wood filament actually does take both paint and stain. So I'm going to go ahead and finish one of the bowls with this Minwax wood finish. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to add some paint to the spinning top here to kind of show you how an acrylic paint works on it. So here's the items back from staining and painting. Now with this big wood bowl, all I did was took some 1500 grit paper and I gave it a wet sand to kind of smooth down the front of it or the outside edges of it really good. It looks really nice. It almost looks like a balsa or feels like a balsa wood. And the inside I left as it is printed. 
So on this small bowl here, I gave it one coat of the stain, let it dry, gave it a light sanding, and then sprayed it with a light coat of shellac, which gives it the sheen. I really like the way this turns out. It kind of gives it an old used look. On the file here, I left it natural. I added just a little bit of red at the bottom, a red acrylic paint, just to make it easier to find, and it seems to work just great. On the top here, I added some blue and red paint, which uh, makes it stand out nicely. I really like this. I think it's going to make some, uh, or going to make for some good Christmas presents. So I'm going to print out a few more of them. Well. I hope you guys learned a little something about 3D printing and how it can be used in your shop. Like I said, I'm going to have a full review of this printer over on my channel if you want to go check it out. I quite enjoyed using it. I'm going to be off to go print more tools for my shop, so back to Colin. Well, that concludes my video for today, or I guess I should say our video for today. I want to thank Paul for helping me with this, the technical side, uh, and doing some printing some pretty interesting things for us to see and watching how the, the printer works and uh, all that aspect of it. But you know, this really did open up a whole world of opportunities for me. I, I really had no idea the different kinds of things that you can do. We're going to be doing a lot more with this in the future as well. Uh, and I put some links in the description box below so you can check out some of the things that we've talked about or that we've shown on this video so you can check those things out yourself. Uh, and also there's an article on Woodwork Web and it will also have the links as well there so you can uh, go and check out some of the, the detail there as well. So uh, pretty interesting 3D printing in the workshop. Who would have guessed it? I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.